Uh, thank you guys all for coming to the seminar. Uh, this first one we've done in what? A few months, I guess. It's been a while. At, since Philadelphia. It had to be April or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're happy to be back. Happy that you guys all uh, chose to spend your weekend with us. We understand if you have to leave, it's getting, well, it's been dark for hours, so it's probably midnight by now. Uh, if your question was not answered here, it's Austin's fault, and you can send a personal written complaint to Austin's actual home. His address is... <laughs> Uh, sorry, you can ask us the question on our Facebook group. Just search Barbell Medicine on Facebook or our forum. Uh, you go to our website, there's a forum tab. We're pretty active on both those things. Otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, uh, our first question. When people lose body weight quickly, does that affect the appetite satiety relationship more slowly compared to when you lose weight at a slower rate, more sustained? I feel like. This question is weirded, worded weirdly. Yeah, I think you probably figure what they're getting at. Basically, differences between losing weight really quickly versus slower or more sustainably. With respect to? Outcomes. Yeah, about the appetite. Weight. Yeah. So I wouldn't, first thing, I wouldn't necessarily say that losing weight more slowly is more sustainable as far as like a long-term rate, like rate of recidivism or weight regain. It doesn't seem to be the case, especially if we rely on data from weight loss medications. And as far as I know with the investigation into how people rate their appetite and their satiety, it doesn't seem to be a marked difference when people lose weight relatively quickly. The biggest factor here has to do with how they lost the weight. So with weight loss medications, for example, people report being very satiated, low appetite, but if people are on very restrictive, very low energy uh, density diets, uh, they do tend to be quite hungry on average, but that is not restricted to just short-term periods, if they did that for a longer period of time, that they still report that same finding. So I think, yeah, I think that's how I would answer this question. Yeah, I, the, the, the short answer that I would give is I would not have any concerns about somebody losing weight more quickly after dietary interventions if that is feasible for them, and I would certainly not deliberately slow somebody's weight loss down with the thinking that that is going to make it more sustainable or easier for them to keep it off. I would, pre I would prefer, if it is possible for them, to get it off quickly in a way that they feel like they can you know, sustain the strategies themselves, mm. um, then I have no concerns over it coming off faster. But as you said, that the, basically I think of it less in terms of the rate of weight loss being the thing that predicts that outcome and more so like, did, did this diet require you to diet at RPE 10 all the time? Was it yeah. the hardest thing to, in, in the world to just get through a day without you know, thinking about food nonstop and having to actively consciously resist it uh, all around you? Yeah, that's not gonna work very well or last very long, right? Regardless of how quickly or slowly the weight comes off. So the speed of weight change is not the variable that I'm concerned about compared with basically how difficult um, or not the day-to-day -day work is. And then if even just basic interventions result in really high effort and, and difficult to sustain strategies, that's one of those situations where the remarkable effect of these medications can just effectively turn all of that off, uh, make the thoughts and about food and cravings of food and all of that stuff just yeah. vanishes. That's been my experience with my patients so far. You know, it's interesting though, this, this is a pretty like sustained, I don't want to call it like a old wives tale or like urban legend, right? But people will say, no, if you lose it slower, it's more sustainable or whatever. And I think there's, I think there's probably something to that in, in, insofar as if you're markedly changing your behaviors and your skill set with respect to like food purchasing, food preparation, uh, battling with different social sort of things you're gonna, that are going to come up, like a party, a wedding, you know, night out, something like that. Uh, that may take a significant amount of time to like put all those pieces together, and so it takes a longer period of time for that person to lose weight, right? And then, but they're armed with this this skill set that you probably can't develop overnight. Yeah. So more uh, of a reverse causation sort of thing. Yeah, medical. yeah, something like that. So I, you know, because people do report that quite often. And the only thing I'll say in addition to this is that. Uh, in like untrained individuals, uh, when we look at like muscle mass loss with rate of weight loss, it doesn't seem to be that much different uh, if people lose weight quickly or slowly, uh, especially if they're not uh, like bed bound or something like that. Uh, but for highly trained individuals, when they lose weight very, very quickly, um, they do tend to lose a significant amount uh, more of lean body mass. Uh, and I will make the caveat, this is not from like water cuts as far as those have been studied. Because water technically is part of the lean body mass component, but when you look at uh, things that don't have to do with manipulating water 
intake. Yeah, you tend to see that. So from somebody who's like a well-trained individual, if they're like, I don't want to lose any muscle mass, I'd probably do it more slowly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think we've sufficiently answered this question. Yeah.